Hello and welcome to Voices of Bluescope, the podcast where we meet the people who work behind the scenes at Bluescope to create strength every day. I'm your host, Martin Feld. Thank you for joining us. This time, we're turning the spotlight on Jane McAloon, Chair of the Bluescope Board of Directors. Jane brings to Bluescope over 30 years of business, government and regulatory experience at senior executive and board levels across the natural resources, energy, infrastructure and utilities sectors. Having spent most of her career in emissions intensive industries, she has deep experience in working at the intersection of business and sustainability challenges across the UK, US and Asia. Within this episode, we're featuring Jane's opening address at her first Blue Scope annual general meeting as chair in which she gave an overview of Bluescope's global performance and its work towards a low-carbon future. Following that, we will transition to her post-AGM interview with Michael Ray, Head of Corporate Affairs at Bluescope Australian Steel Products. Now, let's cross to Jane's address, which she delivered to an audience in person and streamed online from Wollongong in Australia. I would like to start with safety. Bluescope has a strong foundation in managing safety well, and it is a fundamental tenet of how we do business. Disappointingly this year, Bluescope's lag indicator, Total Recordable Injury Frequency Rate, or TRIFA, again increased. Some of our colleagues also sustained very serious life-changing injuries. This is of significant concern to both the board and management, And in July, Mark and his team launched a global refocus on safety program. This is intended to ensure ongoing emphasis on Bluescope's foundational safety practices right across the company. We're encouraged by the leadership Mark and his team have shown in developing and rolling this program out. From the perspective of the board and the Health and Safety Board Committee, We are focused on providing the appropriate support and challenge to management to drive the required improvement in performance. It is the highest priority for the board and management. Let me turn to the FY24 highlights. Bluescope delivered a resilient financial result in a challenging global macroeconomic environment and steel industry volatility. Bluescope continued its track record of shareholder returns a strong balance sheet, and ongoing investment in sustainable earnings and growth. Bluescope also made strong progress under our Transform, Grow, Deliver strategy. Our growth focus is both on continuing the shift towards our higher margin premium and branded products such as Colour Bond and Truecore Steel, including through the new Western Sydney metal coating line, and on growing our US businesses. We have been making steel in the US since 1997, and today we operate in 16 states across that country. Our US business is core to Bluescope's growth, and we're excited by the value creation opportunities that Bluescope has in this large and attractive market. At the same time, We're working hard to unlock a low carbon future for our operations, particularly in our iron and steel making process. This is easy to say, but difficult to deliver, particularly when technology is at its very early stages. We have a long way to go, but we are energized by this challenge. I will say more about decarbonisation shortly, but the board is encouraged by the great progress being made such as the installation of the electric arc furnace at the Glenbrook site in New Zealand. And lastly, we're working to unlock value from Bluescope's 1,200 hectare portfolio of land. This is a multi-decade value-creating opportunity. So let me say a little bit about Bluescope's financial framework. It is fundamental to the sustainability of the company. Established in 2017, it provides essential guardrails for financial management, built on the lessons from Bluescope's first 15 years as a listed company. It underpins all decisions, supporting our transform, grow, deliver strategy. 
Over the last 12 months as your chair, I've reflected on the fundamental importance of this framework. Steel is a cyclical and volatile industry, and pricing is largely determined by international demand and supply. In this context, our financial framework is essential for Blue Scope's long-term financial and operating strength, and balances the competition for capital between shareholder returns and capital investments. This discipline is crucial in enabling the confident operation and investment in our long-life capital-intensive business through macroeconomic cycles. The board firmly believes that the framework should provide shareholders confidence in Bluescope's ability to weather industry and macroeconomic cycles and to drive long-term quality earnings and growth. This is evident in the resilience of Bluescope's performance this year. The board also continues to work hard to provide oversight of the company's approach to driving key sustainability outcomes. Today, we're just up the road from our steelmaking home, the Port Kembla Steelworks, which, in less than four years, will have been continuously operating for 100 years. It is Australia's largest manufacturing site. Port Kembla Steelmaking is steeped in history as the backbone of this local community. But more than that, Port Kembla has been the backbone of a modern and industrialised Australia. You see our products everywhere, on bridges, houses, buildings, and as part of Australia's renewable energy transition, to name just a few. And into the future, with the Blast Furnace 6 Reline project, Port Kembla is our bridge to low emission steelmaking, and it's on track to be operational in 2026. We're progressing our decarbonisation ambitions through partnerships and technology collaborations across the broader iron and steel value chain. In Australia, the team is continuing to identify the most appropriate direct reduced iron or DRI options possible. Potential iron making locations, technology options, and the enablers for each of those options. We're also progressing pre-feasibility work with Rio Tinto and BHP on a pilot electric smelting furnace, which we believe has the potential to unlock the continued use of Pilbara ores in the lower emissions DRI process. Let me turn to the outlook for Blue Scope. Mark will provide a summary of the current operating conditions across the business as covered in the updating earnings guidance we provided in late October and reaffirmed today. We note the outcome of the recent US election and the optimism that markets have shown for the potential impact on the US steel industry. We're monitoring developments to understand what this may mean for Blue Scope to ensure we're well positioned to capture any opportunities that may arise. We're confident in our balance sheet and operating resilience, and our culture and experience in rising to address near-term economic challenges. To that end, we're bolstering performance through a significant group-wide cost and productivity program, as well as working hard on the turnaround of our US Blue Scope coated products business. We're continuing to position ourselves to capitalise when the economic cycle turns, and it will. The board and management remains focused on ensuring our near-term performance is balanced with the investment in longer-term sustainable growth and returns to deliver the future of Blue Scope. Now, turning to board composition and renewal. At the end of last year's AGM, I had the privilege of succeeding John Bevan as the chair of the board. Blue Scope has a collectively skilled and experienced board. At the start of this year, Alistair Field joined the board, bringing more than 25 years' experience in the mining, metals and manufacturing sectors across North America, the Middle East and the UK. He offers himself for election and is unanimously supported by the board. You will hear from Alistair during the item relating to his election. Long-life capital-intensive businesses operating through time in a volatile and cyclical industry require seamless and planned board succession. 
Blue Scope has the culture and experience of what to do at the bottom of the cycle. That corporate experience and memory is as essential at the board as it is at management. Seamless and planned succession at the board ensures those lessons remain understood and effectively pass through director tenure. In practice, this means our approach is to ensure incoming directors serve on the board for a longer period with longer serving members before they retire. With five directors appointed in the last three years and plans underway for ongoing succession, the board asked senior directors Ewan Crouch and Rebecca D. Bradbury to complete their fourth term as directors. It is in this context of managed succession, we seek your approval to increase the maximum number of directors to 12, which will enable this overlap of service to continue. We believe this approach is in the best interests of the company as we facilitate the transfer of corporate knowledge and experience to underpin board effectiveness through cycles. The resolution to increase the fee pool for directors facilitates this process. I would like to conclude with five reasons why it's only going to get better for Blue Scope. One, that's a drum roll there. <laughs> Our commitment to safety and sustainability continues to be at the centre of what we do at Blue Scope and we remain steadfast in our work to secure a sustainable future for our business and the communities in which we operate. Two, we have a highly resilient business driven by our quality margin enhancing premium branded portfolio. This is led by our Colour Bond Steel product portfolio, which is a clear industry leader in Australia and has great potential to capture share in the North American market. Three, we have a strong balance sheet and will remain disciplined in our allocation and management of capital. Four, we're progressing well on a number of turnaround initiatives, including the group-wide cost-out program and the turnaround of the Blue Scope coated products business. And we continue to progress unlocking value in our extensive property portfolio. And five, we have an exciting pipeline of growth opportunities, including the assessment of how we can further integrate our US value chain in a capital efficient manner and ongoing initiatives to expand our earnings contribution from value added products. Our North Star D bottlenecking, the new metal coating line in Australia and Port Kembla plate mill projects will deliver growth and our number six blast furnace reline at Port Kembla and the New Zealand electric arc furnace projects lay the foundation to deliver another generation of sustainable steelmaking in Australia and New Zealand. Before I hand over to Mark, the board would like to acknowledge his leadership of Blue Scope through a few cycles now. Our purpose and our bond underpin everything at Blue Scope. Mark, and his team, as well as the broader Blue Scope, live both these in practice. They know how to pull together to manage challenging times, and they know how to simultaneously invest through the cycle for future value. Thank you to Mark, his leadership team, and the 16,500 strong Blue Scope team across 15 countries for this year's results. Finally, thank you to you, our shareholders, for investing in and supporting Blue Scope. It is the greatest privilege to serve you as chair. And what an absolute delight. We've just finished the AGM here in 2024 in Wollongong. We've got the chair herself. You were the star today, well, Jane. No, Michael, you were the star. I couldn't have oh, thank done it you. without OMC. <laughs> Amazing. And the corporate affairs team couldn't have done it. And our head of investor relations and company secretary, huge, they did a fabulous huge team effort. Team well done, job. everybody. Yeah. yeah. So it was fun. And look, we had so many cadets and employees yeah. and graduates all here yeah. too. Amazing to see them. Just, just the enthusiasm and the belief that the future for them in Blue Scope will be big and broad and international and challenging. You just feel it everywhere. And I just think it's such a cool program that we have. We've had it for like decades. We have. Hugely yeah. successful. A number of the leaders in our organisation have been cadets. It's a hugely successful program. And I just love being around young people. There's nothing like it. It is. And first, first year as chair, some reflections on... What have you found about Blue Scope that you've really liked? 
Uh, I always say Blue Scope's a really special company, and I say that because there's something about the heritage of Blue Scope, the commitment of our people as a consequence, and that sense that we really matter and we do something that really matters, and we have you know decades and decades, almost 100 years in Port Kembla, of history and stewardship that people yeah. take and they just revel in it. And culture is unbottleable, but if we could bottle it, um, Blue Scope's some, got something that's really special. Absolutely. And you talk about our heritage and we're fast approaching our 100 years, aren't we, mm. here in Port Kembla for steelmaking? It's, it's exciting times, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but just remember, John Lysart, the Lysart business is older than Port Kembla. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, but it's and Custom Orb, obviously. So yeah. it's a fabulously... And Butler in the US. Yeah, Butler in the US. It's a fantastic yeah. um, 100 years. I mean, it's a massive achievement when you think about all of the difficulties and cycles that Port Kembla's been through to get to where we are today and then to have this really exciting future with the Blast Furnace 6 reline and the plate mill upgrade and the birth remediation project, the MCL7 yeah. at Erskine Park. Uh, it's just just wonderful opportunity. But it's, of course it's not just Port Kembla, it's the broader yeah, blue scope. Yeah. So the US business and we've got you know great team members over there in New Zealand and ASEAN and China and India. So that's why I say it's a really special company. It's unlike any other steel company in the world. We have an international portfolio. It's resilient and it's been built by past leaders and, and um, stewarded by the current leaders and yeah it's a great place to work sure is and uh, what was the trickiest question you got asked today uh that's a good question i think the question uh about the future of port kembla and the blast furnace it's not that it's a tricky question but actually we really need to explain it to people yes why we're doing what we're doing it's complex right yeah yeah it's not only complex it's actually to explain that it's part of the transition to low emission steel making people think well really how can that be? This is like a blast furnace you're relining is going to be in operation for another 20 years. Well, the point is the technology to move to something that's lower emissions is not really readily available, certainly not for us here. And we need to explain it to people. So not just people in Port Kembla who understand it, but much more broadly. And people need to understand that our blast furnace 5 is actually one of the most efficient in the world. It is, uh, yeah. And... You know, we've got a great track record on that stuff. So anyway, that was, wasn't so much a tricky question, but a question where I feel like we just have to explain, explain to people who we are, why we do what we do, because, because we, we're going to be here for another 100 years. Yeah, there's, there's no short answer to that one, is there? Mm. What were some of the things that came out of the, the questions today? Oh, lots of questions about the United States and growth, yep. uh, a lot of questions about the diversity of our portfolio, the resilience, a lot of questions about how we manage our operations at the bottom of the cycle. That's really, yeah, that's... really challenging. Cost and productivity improvements. Well, you know, the reality is, you know, we're a cyclical business and we have to be efficient mm. in steelmaking um, at the bottom of the cycle. And, you know, here we are yet again. We're here. We're Last back. time, 2015, 16, but we like way back 2011 yeah. and 12. Gosh, 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 that was hard. Um, so there's a theme about that continuity. And I think the themes are also, you know, the board should be held accountable on behalf of shareholders for the performance of the company. And so today is an opportunity to take whatever questions come our That's way we answered them and all. stand up and answer them. <laughs> yeah, so I think that being chair of this company is one of the greatest privileges that anybody could have. Mm. Well, I thought I had the best job, but <laughs> it sounds like you do. So, Look, thanks so much yeah, for joining us. Yeah, you've got us. a great job yeah, too, yeah. Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Next do. time I'm asking the question. Now, Michael, yeah. tell me why your job is the greatest job in the world. Well, it's just an honour to be, you know, the face of this company. You know, I'm not on the only face, but, you know, I do get a bit of airtime and, it, and it's great to be in the community and, and people, they just love Bluescope. And it, it, wherever you're talking to government, to community, to shareholders or whatever it is, that you know, people really like our company. And that's what makes us really proud when we're out there talking with those stakeholders. So, yeah, that's probably why it's, it's the best job in the company. Well, everyone, that was Michael's Minute, brought to you by the chair. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thanks. You've got to give a thumbs up now, Jane. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, we conclude this podcast episode. We acknowledge Jane and Michael for their participation and thank all of the attendees and organising employees who made the 2024 annual general meeting possible. If you would like to learn more about the AGM and gain access to further resources, including an event wrap-up video, please visit the links and show notes in your browser or podcast app. 
thank you very much for listening to Voices of Blue Scope, and we'll catch you next time.